in the past year. And the year 17 small satellites belong to EFA, Dongguan Hong Satellite Company. So this Global Space Exploration Conference is focused on small satellites in China. This TNF consists of four different presentations, start with a general introduction on Superman satellite, which is the first commercial subset of GFH. The whole TNF will refer to the Chinese commercial subset operation, presented by the China survey, and the micro nano satellite development in China will also be mentioned. Besides, China Great War Industrial Corporation will share the idea on Hong Yang as the first satellite. Translation as the only legal subset is put as order. Finally, there will be an outline on the Chinese National Future Satellite Plan of high resolution Celsius and National Space Infrastructure. Uh, this TNF will have the pleasure to invite four distinguished speakers among the 19 minutes. First, the four speakers will give us exciting speech. And the next, the four big IT will share the discussion on small size, cooperation, and the future. And we have a chance to ask some questions. Okay, uh, the four speakers, uh, that's all I will introduce you. Sir. The first speaker is Mr. Bai Taohuang. Dr. Bai is graduated from Beijing Institute of Technology. He is one of the first great experts of the most sensitive satellite and the core the member of CAPS 968 team. As a general designer of HY1B, HJ1AB, and GF1 satellite, he made great contributions to the CAPS Celsius small satellite platform. Now, he is a general designer of the GF6 and other ongoing remote sensor satellite. Okay, let's invite Professor Bai. Uh, 这个卫星项目呢，应该是相关的卫星呢，有些已经展开了运行了。呃，后面呢，我们也是正在研究开发一些新的一些问题，是准备呃做建立系统。啊，它最终的目的就是要整体提高我们国家就在中高分这个民用
交通管理要看汽车，我们老百姓就是很密切，呃，就说跟老百姓生活密切相关的。呃，另外就是有些呃需要快速精准的观测这些房屋啊，有道路损毁啊这些灾害类，也是对时间要求都是比较高的。呃，但是现在呢，有一个问题就是分辨率越高。但是它的实际上是时间的分辨率，实际上是实现起来也是越难的。所以这两个呢，但是这两个从需求上，它往往又是配对儿，就像汽车似的，汽车分辨率必须要压进去，啊，分辨率太低根本看不着。但是它你要看到交通，那必须分钟了极的是。所以这些就是决定了我们这个遥感设计上的一些特殊性。呃，这里是我们一些相关业务部门的一些相关的需求，呃，大家可以看到，从我们一些规划来说的一些，呃，空间分辨率来方面，它对应的时间分辨率呢，一般也是比较高的。当然，除非一些特殊的例子啊，就一般我们讲，就是说时间分辨率越高的，它的空间分辨率往往要求也是越高，但是。现在技术上来说，时间分辨率呢，就是空间分辨率越高，技术上实际上是，呃，时间分辨率越难实现。呃，这里为什么呢？就是从技术来讲，如果是一个我们成像，包括我们自己手里也有手机要照相，我们如果分辨率或者说我们在相机上叫像元素。我们的相元素如果是恒定的，当我们的分辨率要是高的话，它实际上它对应的市场它要变小，它的市场要变小，那么我们要覆盖的观测一个大区域的图像，需要多次照下来覆盖的话，就是需要的次数就比较多，这就是时间，就是为什么分辨率越高，时间分辨率呢是越低的。呃，现在呢，从航天上，我们解决这个高时间分辨率呢，现在主要的手段就是靠，就是卫星的星座，主要通过多个卫星，就是大家排着队的过来看，这样的话啊，时间分辨率提高。这实际上在国际上已经有很多的项目，包括欧洲的，包括美国的，另外包括我们中国人。我们其实各个国家都在这一方面，都是通过这种小卫星的星座来实现高的时间分辨。呃，关于我们国家，就是我们中国在民用中高分这个高时间分辨率实现的一些策略。呃，目前呢，最早我们是在二零零八年发射了环境 A B 卫星。这个卫星呢是最高分辨率是三十米，但是它的成像俯宽呢是七百二十米，它两颗星呢，它可以实现就是两天的对全球的无缝的覆盖，所以这个能力在国际上也是首屈一指。所以分辨率虽然比较低，但是它时间分辨率是高的。所以这在两千零八年，目前这两颗星啊，卫星还是良好，到明年呢就应该是有十年。在二零一三年呢，我们是发射了高分一号。这个卫星呢，因为它又有两米，又有十六米，就是它是两种载荷的相机，所以它的后续呢，将来我们是一个是往就是环境的后续，就十六米，将来我们三十米提升到十六米。另外就是我们两米这个是要独立的系列，这是也是做我们国家一个最高的这个。就后续呢，我们现在是一颗星，当然还有些其他卫星可能相近的分辨率。后续我们还准备再发射三颗，这样的话四颗卫星就成了。将来它时间的它实现的分辨率呢，是就是全摄是两米，呃，还有多光谱，相当于彩色照片，我们还有四个端的，叫多光谱，它可以实现就是一天对于任何一个地区，比如说，呃，我们。就是，就隔一天，就是任何地区我们能够重复的再看到
。如果是要全部看，比如说我们这个要把中国全部的看一遍，这样时间，所以这个时间应该说从这个分辨率来讲，相对还是较高的。后面呢，也是我们从十六米，也是准备，就是一个是我们后面还准备建设两个专门的十六米的卫星，将来跟高一。还有就是后面我们，呃，计划发射的，呃，高六，它也是十五十六米的，所以将来有四颗卫星，它将来可以实现，就原来我们这是两天三十秒，将来我们可以实现一天十六秒，这个不是重访，这完全是一个覆盖，就是我们把全球任意地方都能够完整的看见，所以这个是对这种重大的灾害啊，就是灾前灾后这些环境了。这些整个生态的这些呃评估呢，对比是非常有效的，所以这是整体的一个发发展策略。呃，这里就是我们两米八米星座的一个在轨的一个构图。将来我们在天上四颗星，就是高一加上三颗两米八米后续，四颗星走入相位。这是它的星象点，就是在一天内呢，它可以就是相当于是一个整个一个轨迹，还是非常均匀的分布的。这样它通过撤板可以实现一天的重访。如果不撤板，这样它还要再经过十一天，这样所有的地方都能够看见。呃，这是十六米，就是我们将来是也是按四个卫星这样布置，呃。就基本上每一天只要一照相，你看所有的成像区域基本都搭建起来了，所以这是一个高时间的一个观测。呃，高分一号卫星呢，这个卫星我们是在一三年，就是二零一三年发射，所以到今年已经稳定运行了四年了。所以这个卫星呢，目前也是。国内就是作为一个是第一高分，另外现在应急也是非常稳定，到现在是没有呃任何的一个一个一个疑点吧。说这个卫星呢，它最大的特点是，就是一是两种载荷，就是两米八米，这两米八米呢，就是两米是全色，八米不包，这个十六米也是不包，这是相当于这是用十六米，我们是用四台相机这样通过内交叉实现这个。八百三十公里这么个大幅度，所以这在国际上这是目前是最高的。呃，另外就是我们两米八米，这个是就是跟国际上一些相关的项目的指标是相近。呃，这里是有一些它的影像，这是我们两米八米，就是当时刚一路轨，因为一路轨呢，我们就想看看它的效果。就当时他刚一路轨，他是在银川，这个效果还是电脑里可能看效果都会更更好一点。这是我们十六米相机，八百三十公里的宽，也是当时第一轨一一路轨，从我们国家的东面，也就是从日本上空这样经过，这八百三十公里的大宽，所以这样一些海况海景，所以这个颜色还是层次也是非常非常丰富。呃，这里我们是在应用上做的一些，包括河流、包括矿场，以及包括农业，做一些农业涨势的一些评估、农业面积的一些评估这方面，我们国家政府的相关部门都做了很多的一些应用。呃，高分六号卫星呢，是我们国家就是民用高分辨率重大专项的第六颗星。呃，虽然前面已经打了好多了，这是续，但是发射上它是还在后。因为这个卫星的难点，它实际上是都是单个相机来实现这个大，啊，不像前面是多个相机来批，所以这是它的一个主要特点。当然，它的分辨率比它的，呃，但是它的市场更大，原来是六十六公里，现在我们把两米八米扩到九十公里。呃，这个卫星呢，它的。特点，呃，一个是呢，它的工作呢是，就刚才说了，是单相机实现大市场；，另外就是它要跟高一要互网，就是我们高一虽然打得早，但现在我们的寿命设计是按八年，所以，呃，我们的五到八年是设计八年，考核按
所以说，将来还是有在轨的组网的时间还是非常非常。呃，另外呢，就是我们设计了，呃，对应地标，这是我们国家第一次做，因为这实际上在国际上一些先进的卫星大家不一在做，因为对应地标，它什么含义呢？就是通过，呃，呃，通过对月亮的观测，我评定我星上辐射的亮度，这样主要是为了高精度的，我们遥感一般讲。叫高精度，叫定量化分析，就通过这个亮度的深浅，我来评估，比如说像农业，我来评估农业的这个长势，是吧？甚至于评估不同装甲的种类，所以就要去通过这个颜色的这些微小的差异。那么我们自己微小的精度到底多少，就需要标定啊，因为传统的我们国家也一般都对地对地定标，对地定标有一个问题，就是要经过大气。咱们知道现在沙尘什么东西是大气啊，很干净，是吧？所以大气要标降，有时候一刮风下雨，地面会看不着，所以这个地标效率是很差。现在对月呢，它就就是绕过了大气，它的地标效率、地标精度呢，呃，都可以得到不同提高。呃，这个项目呢是预计在明年年初会发生。呃，另外一个项目就是我们的后续的两米、八米、三颗，这是将来跟高一完全是也是跟高一要组网，所以这个基本上就是我们高一的一个，因为原来高一有十六米，所以现在是没有十六米，就是完全在技术上应该说相对比较强的。这几张图呢，在前面已经不多介绍。呃，另外一个项目就是。刚才说的，我们的十六米后面还要再继续接续。呃，十六米呢，这里我们也是完全利用了高温六的这个呃高一的这个技术。它一个是主网，另外就是它实际上是从载荷配置上，我们又增加了一些新的载荷，包括湖外，啊湖外的就大部分的湖外，将来对森林火灾了，包括那个呃地面辐射这些各方面的。包括我们做我们更加精细化的一些探索了这方面，会更加有更多的一些用途。另外，我们还有一个高光谱，平均分辨率可以，光谱分辨率可以达到五个纳，是接近两百多谱，所以这个谱段数非常多，所以将来也可以更加精细的辨识地面，特别是矿产、矿产资源这种需要高光谱的信息。所以这个卫星呢，也是。两颗卫星，我们计划是建双星，也是在明年发射，也是在还有明年年底的过程，争取是在，可能是在后面发射。所以这里就是我们卫星的一些覆盖的情况。如果是两颗星，它还是或多或少会有些小的一些漏缝。四个星，或者全球任何地区都能够看得见。呃，最后呢，就是我们也是后续发展一些建议吧，也是跟大家一块交流。就是因为两米八米、十六米啊，这个现在的遥感这方面的应用的领域还是非常广，所以这个是将来一定是要持续发展。包括我们两米八米呢，后面也是因为作为民用的最高，我们自己也是想再进一步的提高一些能力，包括一个是要扩张广泛，因为现在果断多，这样用户就会多。第二呢，就是它俯瞰还要增加一些，因为就现在我们现在是，呃，在九度包括高六的九多公里，看来我们往这上走。还有就是我们要改善这个图像的一些精度，特别定位精度。目前中国这方面呢，应该是跟国际上最先进的还有一定差距，我们还争取把这方面做得更好。再也就是把卫星的敏捷能力提高，就将来我们可以。呃，就多条带。目前我们现在高一高六还做不到，将来我们可以多条带，甚至于这种调转九度，对不同地区这种，讲通过这种多模式成像，增加更多、更呃，就是更多新的信息。好，我跟大家介绍了这么多，谢谢大家。Thank you, Mr. Bai. Uh, let us speak.
from the Mr. Zhu Yidong, Mr. Zhu, uh, Vice President of Space U, the senior engineer, are surviving and have 60 years experience in promoting high-resolution commercial satellite in immigrant China market. He is in charge of sales center and production center, which undertake the most business review of space fuel. The team is the first official providing the satellite in the map product, China based map for many Chinese web. And currently, the only satellite map provider for Baidu, for Baidu, Tencent, and others. Okay, let's invite Mr. Zhu. Uh 咱们今天这个整个这个活动 Galaxy二零一七，它实际上是一个关键字，是这个space。那我实际上我我从事的这个业务做了大概将近二十年，我做的是二次space，二次是什么呢？因为关系呢，因为我们做的是这个呃我们的工作就是观察我们自己的这个
么还有一个就是，呃，这是我们和咱们有国企在实际上是在非洲，呃，帮助非洲援助非洲做的一个呃呃水稻种植项目，实际上种了这个两百九十多平方公里的水稻，是上万亩的这个水稻田。这水稻田涉及到这个土方、挖土方、挖土方，呃，它需要大比例使得这个电子地图。我们我们给他们提供的是利用卫星影像的立体像立体数据，立体相对，提供大比例尺的这个呃地形图，呃，供给那个咱们的呃企业啊，呃来设计这个工程施工量、采光量，还有这个我们呃自己呃设计开发的一个产品叫做电信数据包，电信数据包主要用于这个、呃、咱们电信呃。就电信运营商或者电信这个公司，比如说我们是百度，呃，我不是，不，我们是那个呃，中兴和华为的那个呃供应商。这供应商是地图供应商，呃，它的这个公这个地图是一个呃电信专用图，呃，它其实是一个呃叫一个数据包，这个数据包包括包括了呃二维地图、三维地图、呃分地物分类图、呃道路矢量图，还有这个。地面高层模型，还有建筑高度模型，打造成一个图。啊，我们每年给，我们每年是给他们提供这样全球范围内的，呃，多种多样的这个电信数据包，呃，地图。这个是一个标准化的产品，行业性的。那么另外一个标准化的产品就是那个机场数据图、机场数据库。机场数据库是符合那个国际民航组织的这个、呃、要求的这么一个数据标准，它也是一个。就说一个 data combo， 然、啊、后这个它分两个数据库，一个叫机场管理数据库，还有一个叫电子地形数呃和障碍物数据。这个这个数据包主要是什么用呢？其实是对于这个呃民航客机，还有机场的这个场站管理，呃都有非常重要的作用。这个这个我们在一两年前开发这个产品，基本上是应该是呃突破了国外几家公司的这个垄断这个行业的局面。然后我们也在国内，呃，推广这样的业务，就是我们大概目前做了，呃，呃，已经有四到五家机场的用呃这个呃电呃机场数据包了。那么我们还会再推这个民航企业、航空呃大飞机企业，知道它在它的这个就是相当于飞行数据里面，就是地图至少的一部分。呃，这是我们跟地方政府呃做的这个项目。这个是相当于是地方政府在开发，这是云南洱海，呃，大理，他当他在当地去开发这个大理是五 A 级国家风景旅游区。那么这个消息、规划消息传出呢，就是当地的老百姓就开始呃四大乱建了，就是建那个呃自己的农家乐，开始做旅游了。呃，这样的是和规划不相符，就没有经过政府管制管理的。那么政府就派这个呃规划执法部门去管理。哎，它管理的过程中，这个因为洱海它这个两百平方公里左右，那么它执法一遍，呃，大概需要十个月到一年时间。这样的话，实际上，呃，力度不够。那么他们跟我们想了一个办法，就是用高分辨率的卫星数据，每个月拍摄一遍，然后在数呃在那个图上发现这个变化，然后呃有针对性的去。呃，定点打击这个这个违法的这个十三乱建或者说违规的这个农家乐，这样的话就是说，基本上每个月都可以呃打击几个比较严重的，哎、呃，这这这就是这个整个事件在一年半的时间内得到了有效的进展。哎、呃，土地执法部门觉得这个事情非常好，这个遥感给他们帮帮了很大的忙。还有这个呃，我们在呃这个移动智能终端上做了很多这个应用，这个应用也在。给这个我们用户在使用的这样的和那个呃 LBS 平台一起来来这个使用。那么这个应用具体到一个那个那个这个行业呢，我们觉得在城市管理中，比如说这个呃目前的这个呃城市管理是我们国家的一个重大的一个一个一个一个课题，因为咱们国家推广的这个城市化，我们国家县级以上的行政区划有两千八百多个，是吧？大家可能可以去查到。那我们国家这个住呃比较大的，就是说上的城市，大概有四五百个。那么这些城市落实到每一个城市管理，其实到是到区的，比如说海淀区。那么
呃，海淀区在管理处可能会落到每一个街道，那街道它可能会有几千万的经费来做管理，它怎么管理呢？实际上也是，比如说我们举个例子，城管、自来水、电力，还有我们这个呃居民生活相关的这个活动，这些都是这个管理中呃提高人民生活水平的一项指标，可能是。涉及到这个基层管理的这个一个一个政府的一个考核考核的业绩，那么呃基层管理就会呃他们有大量的预算和资金来做这个，怎么做呢？我们举个例子，比如说是我们在深圳市宝安区的松岗街道，呃给他们做了一个用遥感卫星呃多期拍摄，发现这个呃就是呃呃小商小贩的那个那个那个呃违规的这个这个生意啊。呃，给这个城管这个提供信息，那么城管就会呃，就有目的的出击。同时，呃，城管的这个大家可以看到这个呃左下角啊，这是城管的这个、呃、指挥大厅，那么右下角是这个城管的这个一个城管小队的一个一个呃外界终端。他们每一个城管小队指挥大厅知道他城管小队在哪干什么，这是一个指挥的作用。同时，每期的更新给他们的工作带来了定点。那个任务的安排，呃，这个东西每个做出来就是说，发挥了呃卫星多期采集加移动智能终端，呃，这个高速的四 G 通讯，呃，综合起来做的这么一个东西。他做的一个东西，并不是说说他已经落到了这个县级以下，已经到了街道级的这个这个这个应用。那么这个应用在咱们国内，呃，就是每一个城市都有都有城板城板的街道，上千个街道。那么我们国家有呃有好几百个上千个城市，那这种应用我觉得市场空间非常大，而且它是综合这个遥感的这个优势，这是叫做城市市政的管理。那么我们想的自来水、燃气，呃这些都会有用到多期遥感定期监测的这样一个呃这个方向。另外一个就是我们呃正在正在提升自己的水平，去呃追追求的这么一种遥感应用发展。实际上是挖掘呃变化信息的呃遥感卫星数据背后的呃情报，那么呃有有作用在保险或者农业情报分析。另外一个非常重要的也非常有经济价值的就是股市和期期货市场，股票和期货市场通过我们的遥感定期分析做那个长期的监控，监控这个影响股市和期货的一些指标指标性的信息。那么这些指标性的信息，比如说我们的呃战略储备油的储量等等，那么呃监测到这些指标性的信息以后，就会有必放矢。这些东西就是商业情报的挖掘。那么我们遥感数据在商业情报挖掘上面，我们一直在致力于这个呃领域的呃市场开发和应用。我们的技术已经成熟了，只是有待我们去做。这个在国外啊，国际上做的比较多。咱们国内目前还没有比较成熟的那个应用，我们这是我们致力于的一个方向。刚才介绍了一下我们日常工作中的一些呃，实际上这些那个案例吧，呃，以便在座的各位了解我们今天这个关于 Space 主题的这个会议嘛。那我们是一个呃地球观测的这个这个这个这个公司。那么呃，重复一下我们的业务。那我们业务说的比较简单。就是用非常通俗的简呃方式来说，实际上是三个方式方向的这个工作。第一个就是拍照片，就是拍地球的照片。那么我们拍照片延伸过去的增值服务是，呃呃制图、测图、提供卫星图的服务以及更新地图的服务。那么第二个方向是呃变化监测，变化监测是需要多期拍摄，多期拍摄我们提供的服务就是一个监测服务。呃第三个。第三个方向，第三个应用就是这个，呃，我们去挖掘背后的信息，它是一个商业情报的东西。那么今天的时间比较短，我就加速一下后面的这个。那么，呃，下面介绍我说的正题。那么我们地球观测的这个卫星到底是什么样的呢？这个是我的，呃，我们家的小孩子，就是我的小儿子画的一幅画。呃，这个是他们英语老师，英语课上说叫画这个。这幅画是一个说，到底是那个呃遥感卫星是什么样的功能呢？这幅画是这样的，但是大家觉得画不好，我用他那个女同学的画给大家来讲解。他女同学画的好一些，呃呃
是怎么来的呢？我给大家说一下，他们小朋友脑子里的遥感卫星的是什么？是一个太空中的数码相机，围绕着地球转，它拍我们的星球，拍照片。另外一个，它的大小差不多就和家里的这个汽车差不多大。哎，我觉得这个非常呃这个形象啊，一个汽车大概四米左右，重量大概一吨左右。这个就和我们的这个遥感卫星的这个指标，恰恰是相符合的。我觉得小朋友们说的真是这个很切题，很很很准确。这个呃，而且便于记忆啊，这三点我们下一步记住。呃，再看我们现在的这个，呃，我举的例例子是高速面对卫星，就是在目前比较流行的，呃，有我们的高警去年年底十二月发射的，还有那个呃欧洲的这个呃 Pleiades， 还有那个。呃，美国的 Webby 系列，那么大家都是这个呃超高速面对吧？就是亚米级、零点五以上级的面对的卫星。我比到这儿，就是跟大家说一下目前当前的一些这个卫星情况。那我要说的是，我想介绍的是我们国家第一个商业化的这个卫星数据——高景卫星。在此做一个广告，高高景卫星的这个呃，目前是去年十二月发射之后，呃，是我们国家。第一个商业化的超高分辨率、嗯、多传感器的卫星星座，它的计划是十六加四加四加 X， 那么十六颗的是那个光学卫星，是 optical 的光学卫星，呃，那个还有后面的四颗是高光谱卫星，还有雷达卫星，就是萨尔卫星，还有这个视频卫星，这整个组成一个星座，是我们有一个发射的这个计划，是咱们国家的这个商业化的一个卫星星座计划。目前发射的高景一号的呃零一星、零二星的指标就在这里，时间的关系我不跟大家说了。它的那个采集的那个呃这个灵活程度啊，呃也在右边这个图上。呃我的时间不多，我就往后过了，大家可以这个呃看一眼。就是灵活是一个敏捷卫星，呃它的那个数据规格有那个全色，呃零点五米全色，然后是两米的多光谱，呃。这是那个我说的深彩色的融合产品，还有这个呃紫外假彩色产品，呃，同时它还可以呃从采采集同轨立体数据，同轨立体数据最后可以做成呃那个数数字地表模型和数字高清模型 DSM 这种这些，呃，这是样片，这是标准的样片。那么我们除了这个第一颗就商业化卫星之外，我们还能跟给这个用户提供什么样的卫星组合应用呢？我们可以提供国内的所有的民用卫星的这个对地观测卫星的数据。那我跟大家介绍一下，咱们最快的看一遍，包括三十米的环境卫星数据，这是它的亮片，呃，效果，包括资源三号，资源三号卫星是我们的，实际上是测绘卫星，它的一个。呃，是单片是二点一米，它的这个有有三线阵立体，三线阵立体可以成呃三点六米左右分辨率的三线阵立体影像。这三线阵立体影像主要用于呃大比例尺测绘。这是它的三线阵立体影像。呃，这是我们做的一个例子，这个是山西省十四万平方公里的资源三号卫星数据，我们用了很多级数据，呃，是三线阵立体数据，做的 d t m 实名采样间隔，呃，我们。用呃用这个测绘制图的办法生成了这个呃 D T M， 还有我们的高分一号数据，呃它的呃它有两个传感器，一个十六米传感器，这个是我们已经把它送到这个在百度我们互联网上有这个十六米的卫星数据，还有两米的呃这个这个亮片，还有高分二号是零点八米的卫星，呃所以所有的这些卫星。都可以拿来做这个组合，或者说呃组成相应的遥感应用解决方案，提供给咱们的这个全球，就是全国全球的用户。所以我们在这个国内啊，我相信这个事情呢是这个国内市场的这个遥感卫星用服务的第一第一位。那么我们的这个呃组织架构是，我们是属于中国测绘技术有限公司的，那中国测绘技术有限公司是航天科技集团下属的专业子公司，呃做这个信息的，呃。那么最后一个总结的意义就是说，今天实际上我们来大部分是来做广告的。呃，首先是宣传我们的国产的高分辨率那个商业化的卫星高景
另外一个呃说一下我们的这个饰品公司，呃，那么最终就是我们利用这个高铁以及国产地呃国产地质观测卫星，可以为呃各行各业的用户提供遥感应用服务。好，谢谢大家。Thank you, Mr. Chu. Okay, the third speaker, uh, Shi Shihan. Mr. Shi Shihan is a satellite, small satellite host city designer and a satellite system designer for the micro satellite and the nano satellite. Okay, please put Mr. Shi. Hello, everybody. Uh, having given the report about negative or regular satellite, the work is conducted by the FIT satellite community. The presentation is composed of four parts. First, I will give a brief introduce of all 501 satellites. The satellite job eight section, according to the video, is 15 kilometers. The job has 1,200 Orbit Archives, Science Center Orbit. Uh, it's a visual and application. It's the first public scientist of China. This is a real life Chinese Pan Asia students. First is the gym of animal friend radio communication of satellites. Second is the gym of watching the first round of space. Third is the gym of the second space and the square on board the test. About the underground band radio competition, I have said the channel of number one to let it separate it from Oscar 16.8. From the picture, we can find the provides vehicles, wheel check, wheel check, package, service. It has provided more than five years on board the service. The right picture is the satellite we watch plus from our space. You can find the VHL band and the UHL band and the of this satellite in the picture. It's what is the China Pan Light Research Foundation Studies events of year 2009. About the central space and the state and the square as model. It's the first unit of the spiral kernel is as of Johnson Park and Turn. The idea put forward by a private student square. The model was compared in the ground, then when the server of working on the board, center is raised command. The deploying machine raised the ground, then it's in free and the magnetic radio station. The middle picture, you can see the station or release in the space. The former chairman put it out and answered the receipt. They said, the children day activities. It's verified the kind of technology of custom 100 platforms. It has been used by several services, such as the particular number nine services. Texas satellite number four and Texas satellite number five and so on. It has provided over five years of service on board. Five more than one year to the left. It's obtained second class prize for the Beijing Science and Technology Awards. Second day is up two satellites. Up two satellites consider one level satellite and three pack satellites with a mass about 25 pyramids and 10 pyramids respectively. And the one plus set deployed two sun satellites with a mass of about 1 km. On September 2015, the center was sent into the new cycle sun synchronized orbit by CZ number 6 orbit uh, with the children of 1513 pyramids in production of 1917.5 pyramids. No return of the sun's nodes of 610. The study of the survey is at least one or two years. The survey was designed by distributed network topology using an actual low-power smart interface to form a standard board. 
is characterized as a high configuration. Simple interface, only power of the information bus interface. He has two mission objections of hyperlocal to select. The parallel objections of mission are parallelized optical television. The second year objects of how to mission is to build a space radio station. He has about five signs in this section. Around the picture percentage of the view of overlap, the percent X view is about 10%. Well, the second lens is about 1.1 millimeter per second. The dead work is conducted by the Bay Airspace Tension Center. In this picture, we can see it shows a good agreement between solar calibration and GPS orbit solutions. And another is the integral relation of space and ground. We have built a UV ground station which received the temperature and the sensor remote command in the UV ground. And uh, you also can build, get a physical quality of the satellite on the go. Just use VHR IPP. You can set the direction, level set, bigger set, and the sunset. Then selection the velocity quality such as the temperature, voltage, and the contents and so on, then you can get uh, bigger. This is some picture of atom ground radio action of the crystal light. The large picture is some 10 angels to dance the same the short light signal. The large picture is the sex short light of hope number two on the third ever set view offset third light station page. Third is standardized or active. We have developed several standardized devices to provide energy to choose 18 class free targets, 123 targets, 43 standardized, 24 global targets, and product of micro satellite activity. Here you can see on board the computer, JS receiver, UHF field translator, star sensor, sun sensor, and so on. Is too high surface. So, it's a video surface. It's a beautiful commission user and application to form big data application to the motor sensor information. A job for micro level surface, certain architecture of DLFH surface company new team. It's what we can take a at July 15, 2017. In other words, a week later, it will be that much. It will desire a much major module, which can obtain the various types of major states. It can support the effective multi of high dramatic and short time travel, phenomena, air landing, power service management, arbitrary and emission. The structure of the evolution, production, and so on. And then with the picture module, you can give a high resolution service that can be support. Population, urban, development, planning, see software, next software, pollution, monitoring, and so on. Under type of condition, the step allows to reach the urban level in major phase of science. This line picture is the Venus ship coverage of the gene. With an open technology, in time to is the ideal low cost manual functional machine, micro learning set, will be more and more intelligent and useful. With a wide application of universal sensor information and larger this micro learning will play an important role and eventually change our life in the future. The first is that the company is committed to the development and the application of small storage technology and is willing to work with you to contribute to the development of micro data sets. Thank you. Thank you.
in such a as uh, as hope the success of a two five one satellite it will be launched uh, about ten later ten, ten days later. Okay, uh, let's invite the fourth speaker, Mr. Mr. Jia. Mr. Jia is the vice president of Beijing Tianjin Human Technology and in charge of international cooperation of ESAT project. Please. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we want to kick off 2017 by introducing you a truly practical and revolutionary project, DSAT. According to the International Communication Union of 2017, there is still lots of area on this planet couldn't cover by mobile network. What I'm going to show with you, where I've been working for years, is a solution to this problem. This app consists of 60 little small satellites, integrate a, a ground, a ground infrastructure, a company provide two-way communication via inter-satellite data technology. Not like most American or European systems, this app integrates six major functions. Data collection, data exchange, automatic identification system, ADSB for aircraft, mobile broadcast, and the navigation augmentation. Why we choose Leo? First, short transmission delay. We can easily realize near real-time communication in the range of global coverage. Second, because satellite of Leo has a small pass loss, enable us to make cheap scale terminals for our subscribers to extend their applications. Besides, three network, telecom, internet, mobile broadcast can also be integrated by DZ. Support hundreds of millions of subscribers and tens of millions of concurrent subscribers. The application of DZ are more than we can imagine. As you can see in these pictures, the application of this app contains a lot of industry and application scenarios, such as agricultural forest, water conservation, homeland resources, and so on. This is the model of the satellite. Our orbit is 900 kilometers, and the weight is 180 kilograms. Uh, let me show you some of our typical application demonstrations. First one, public applications. Uh, there are about 1.3 billion people in China. And uh, President Xi Jinping said in APEC that there will be 700 million person time travel outside China in the next five years. With this said, you should know better about your next trip before you travel, and there will be no blind spot, even in the complicated environment, such as Antarctic or Arctic area. Out for a venture, emergency contact must be done without any delay. And with this app, during the trip, you will never feel alone. This app is going to establish a global rescue platform which provide emergency communication services to overseas people. The platform contains the communication services, emergency rescue, emergency communication, and mobile broadcast system. As you can see in these pictures, that integrating this set chip into a cell phone, we can push weather and local travel information to you. And the emergency rescue system will report the routes and real-time location for you when you need assistance. We can we can find the nearest help around the world. And the DSAT application has many forms of communication forms, such as message, pictures, and voice. Imagine DSAT communication network is a, a communication freedom that allows everybody in the, on, on this planet 
to help the communication services any corner on this planet. Second application, ocean application. Uh, the sea is the treasure of all mankind. Uh, about 71% of the Earth's surface is covered by sea. President Xi Jinping proposed to focus on sea, understand sea, and develop and manage sea. In order to collect and communicate all the information on sea, Chinese government will initiate intelligent ocean project, which they said play an important role in it. This has fully satisfied the demand of ocean communication, AIS data collection, satellite broadcast, and navigation augmentation. Ocean communication system can easily receive hundreds of millions of information of buoys on the sea. And the AIS data collection system can prevent ship collision by gathering the information of the location, uh, every boat's location and routes. Satellite broadcast system can acquaint every vessel on the sea with weather and the local information. This app can provide near real time communication 24 7 and, find, and help them to find the nearest fueling services to promote productivity of marine transportation business. China is building marine time to grow under the One Belt, One Road strategy. The key point to this strategy is interconnection. This year, is going to build a united information soup road for this one belt, one road strategy to ensure the activity on the sea, resist natural disasters, improve ocean supervision. This year, the devote itself to, is, to establish a space soup road for the world. The third one, Internet of Thing, IoT. Uh, the IoT market will reach trillion dollars in the year 2020. And the biggest part, as the biggest part of the IoT low power wide area network, LPY, are getting more and more attention. Lots of countries tend to build this system by themselves. This end possess the capability of accommodating hundreds of millions of subscribers and tens of millions of concurrent subscribers. Combined with the figure of the small transmission power and cheap scale terminal, real-time communication and global two-way communications. This app can fully satisfy the LPY applications. Besides, this app terminal has a very cheap standby cost and the cost-effective communication that will eliminate the concern of the user by using this technology at any time, by anyone, on anywhere. Let me talk a little bit more about Internet of Vehicles. Uh, there, there are about 2,000 million cars in China until 2016. And uh, in this scenario, it is a very typical scenario of, about the, this application. Imagine there is a transportation company with a fleet of 100 trucks Every day, those trucks carry tons of food from China to other countries, to other Asian countries. How to improve the visibility of those 100 trucks and the increased productivity of the transportation company? When there is no cell phone signal most of the time, and the uh, telecom operator has to change when the truck crosses the border. This is a solution. To this matter. This app can provide fleet manager a service to track the routes and get real-time reports integrated with status and the locations of their 100 trucks. <coughs> Combined with the data collection, data exchange, mobile broadcast, and, and the navigation augmentation function, our two-way communication and control solution not only help the uh, fleet manager to temperature control of the food or refrigerant goods in transit, but also can help them to get actionable data on the status of their 100 trucks. Fourth, navigation augmentation. In the year 2020, global based on navigation satellite system will be accomplished, integrated with 
uh, based on this navigation signal, this set will enhance the positioning accuracy to decimeter level. Our, our technology here is using both space and ground structures combined with the mobile communication, mobile communication uh, corporation. And uh, we provide the subscribers with submeter, decimeter, and centimeter after services. The application of this uh, uh, scenario is very wide, content with such as aviation, agricultural, transportation, and oceanary. And the DSEL devotes itself to help the world to, uh, to preserve this world with centimeter ruler. This is our first satellite. It is now under construction. Uh, it will be launched at the end of this year, and we will, in, we will invite all the potential customers or partners to join this verification of our first. And in 2019, 12 satellites of first orbit will be put into space. With the coverage of global range, we can start our international business. And we will complete this constellation by launching the rest of the 48 satellites in the year 2020. There are two phases. The first one is to establish a global no blast spot data exchange communication satellite constellation. And the second generation of this set will maintain the inter-satellite link technology, frequency, and application, most of the customers of the first generation to build a wide band satellite system, began global broadband services. After decades of international cooperation, we believe that a good commercial system must be an international commercial system. So we would like to invite all the countries in the world to construct this installation and the, even the ground space system together with us. We would like to let everybody join this project. We would like to share all the applications in the area, uh, communication systems, and jointly develop the customers and even the terminals that's useful. This is Internet of the Universe. We are always online. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all our speeches. Uh, let's uh, continue the DNF. Uh, let's invite uh, Pat VIP to the, to the desk. Uh, first, this the Pi. This the two. Mr. He Wu from the uh, Great Wall Company and uh, Mr. Balanaha Bosami from South Africa and uh, Mr. John Yorak Kamadi from the Kenya. Welcome, please. Welcome. Here, uh, we will discuss, uh, talk about, uh, from, talk about focus on small satellite uh, cooperation and the future. Uh, so, uh, let's uh, give the chance uh, to the VIP, not, uh, not present it just now. So, uh, first please, Mr. Hello,主持人。谢谢主持人。好，您记得各位朋友，我是个先生，大家好，我叫唐梦，来自中国长城工业集团有限公司。嗯，唐梦公司呢，成立于一九八零年，是中国政府唯一授权人士行业发射卫
走向这个较早走向国门，进入呃商业竞争市场的高科技产品。随着一九八五年我们在长征火箭进入国际发射市场，那长征公司呢成功进行了五十二次的发射，啊，将六十颗卫星呢发射到太空中。我们在此交付了九个国际的卫星系统。那么可以说呢，中国。商业航天的产品和服务得到了国际客户的认可。那长征公司呢，作为商业航天的参与者，啊，也是践行者，我们呢也是商业航天的服务者。二零一六年呢，我们在珠海航展推出了商业航天国际化应用工程。那么这个工程呢，包含四个项目，这四个项目也是长征公司啊，在中国商业航天的这个进程当中啊。去思考、啊。第一个项目呢是红雁项目，刚才呢贾总做了一个非常精彩和详细的介绍啊，这里我不赘述。那么第二个项目呢是回笼项目啊，回笼系统。啊，回笼系统呢是导航应用的这样一个应用系统。我们知道呢，中国之所的导航卫星系统啊，北斗系统，二零二零年的时候呢，全球会飞往完毕。那么回笼系统呢，将一这个导呃北斗的导航系统啊。向这个北斗的导航终端呢，呃，播放一些一些相关的驱动信息，提高这个终端的定位精度啊，我们全球提高定位精度可以达到零米级。那么回笼系统将是为我们中国啊北斗系统导航的增强服务的一套应用系统，为我们国家呢建立一个啊以英语为刻度感知世界的天启。那么第三个系统呢是全球间站系统。刚才呢也介绍到，啊，中国的遥感卫星事业已经发展，全球的遥感卫星这种数据的丰富，现在呢也有一这样的一个课题，就是遥感卫星数据的接收和应用。长城公司呢现在正在开展，啊，也将计划在“十三五”期间呢，我们将在全球建立十个到二十个的遥感卫星的应用接收站，将这些遥感卫星的数据融入到充分的利用。啊，同时呢，能够进行这种遥感数据的本地化、产业化。那么最后一个项目呢，叫商业车控服务的体系。我们知道呢，商业航天这种发展啊，促进了我们的尤其小卫星的这种商业卫星的发射。那么对于国内商业车控这个领域的服务呢，显然是很大。我们呢，面向这种小卫星的车控的服务的需求，同时降低商业航天啊，我们。车控服务的价格，更好的为他们提供服务。我们呢，开发了一套，啊，符合空气卫星、遥感卫星应用的卫星地面测控管理软件。那么，依照这个商业的软测控软件呢，我们将围绕它建立起一套全球的测控服务的体系，啊，商用的测控服务体系，为这些小卫星的商业发展服务呢，提供完整的这种场馆，啊，包括应急的。那么最后呢，呃，我这个也想再最后总结一下。那么对长城公司商业航天的这种发展啊，我们进行了这样的一个事业，希望更多的组织知识能参与其中。那长城公司也以开放的心态和完整服务呢，向各位呢提供相关的解决方案啊，我们一起来促进这个事业的发展。谢谢大家。Thank you. Uh, this is the second speech. Mr. Masani. Thank you, Chair. Good morning. Uh, from a South African perspective, I think we've been fortunate because we've got a strong space heritage that dates back to the 1980s. Um, the first satellite that was built by South Africa was called the Green Sat. And we did have launch capabilities back then. But uh, we also had a very checkered past in terms of the apartheid era. So we came under a strong international pressure. And there was many sanctions imposed in, on South Africa at the time. And so we had to dismantle the nuclear capabilities. But as a consequence of that, what happened was we uh, foregone the space capabilities as well. And what we tried to do is resurrect them. So where we are at the moment uh, is looking at what government needs. Uh, we've got about 30 old governments in South Africa, uh, departments. And we've kind of assessed what would their needs be if we had to have a formal space program. So we've followed three pathways in a sense in terms of satellite development. The first one is around uh, CubeSats. 
So we started a program at the university, the Cape Community University of Technology. It was a formal uh, program between France and South Africa called the ESSATI program, where students would study towards a master's degree and would get a dual degree in South Africa and in France. And that we should be taking about 30 students a year. As a consequence of that, there's a number of satellite missions that have followed. So we've had the first mission, which is a science mission, we had an HF radar beacon to calibrate layers on the Arctic that's uh, position for science uh, on the, uh, the polar cat. Um, there's, there's also been two QB50 satellites that have been developed by South Africa that were released in the last two weeks from the International Space Station. And that was looking at uh, characterizing the lower thermosphere. Uh, we've also just placed a contract on the university to develop an AIS prototype and uh, to host a special imager that's going to look at fire signatures on the surface of the Earth. And if that is successful, we plan by 2020 to have a constellation of nine satellites for AIS and VDS uh, applications, and then another nine for fire applications. On the small steps, we are currently building a 450 kilogram uh, satellite, which will be ready by December next year. That has 10 multi-spectral uh, multi bands, uh, 2.5 meters and a 10 meters. So it's got high res, medium res, and a matrix, which is continuous imaging at 1.9 meter ground sampling distance. So that will be ready by December next year and launched early 2019. And then we're looking at follow-up missions in there. That platform is also going to be used for a sub-1 to plus uh, satellite mission uh, as a follow-on mission. And then uh, we're also looking at the 150 kilograms plus, so we're looking at a synthetic aperture radar, and then also a series of science missions. So when, just before I left South Africa, we just had a sign up in a new strategic framework for the South African National Space Agency for the next five years. And we've been given the green light to develop a whole series of satellite missions called scientific the conservation, and then we're also looking at the uh, comms and GNSS as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next, please, Mr. Kaman. Yes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Dr. Kaman from Kenya. Uh, I am the coordinator of the Kenyan Space Agency. Our space agency is a very young agency. It was established in, March, in the month of March this year, so we are about uh, two months old. Well, they were saying we are the youngest uh, space agency in the world. Uh, nevertheless, we have uh, had many, many activities in my country, uh, space activities. Uh, the government, by establishing a space agency, uh, recognizes that uh, for the citizens of Kenya and the citizens of Africa in general, to achieve uh, their aspirations quickly uh, is a very, very high need to embrace what can be offered by space. Uh, and I think uh, we are lucky because we are establishing space programs this time because uh, other people have gone before us and as was seen in the presentations, uh, most people are now ready to collaborate with everybody in the world. And therefore I can speak on behalf of Kenya uh, and I think on behalf of the whole of the African continent and say that the continent is now ready to utilize what space as well. And, and, I'm, and I'm happy about the presentation because most of the presenters were talking about having a global uh, collaboration having ground stations everywhere in the world. And I think uh, Africa will be one of the good areas to think about when we think about the micronization of space. To uh, be able to uh, harness what space has to offer 
we recognize the fact that we need to very, very quickly uh, develop capacity uh, so that our people can use uh, what this has to offer. And therefore, uh, we have very, a very ambitious program uh, of training our citizens in universities. Uh, so we are collaborating with a number of countries. Uh, the Kenya Space Agency collaborates very, very closely uh, with the Italian Space Agency. There is a historical reason for this. They came in the 1960s and established a uh, satellite uh, launching base in our country, in the east coast of the continent. Therefore, we have had long collaborations. We collaborate with the, uh, with the European uh, Space Agency. Uh, this year, uh, we have uh, been lucky. We have been uh, awarded uh, the construction of a CubeSat, the University of Nairobi in Kenya, in collaboration with the University of Rome, uh, uh, constructing a CubeSat that will be launched at the end of this year uh, from the EPO module uh, courtesy of JAXA. So this, uh, in, a, in a short way, says uh, how uh, quickly our governments would like to develop a positive so that uh, our citizens in Kenya and in the whole of the African countries uh, can uh, very, very quickly be ready uh, to harness what space as to all. Thank you all. Uh, next, uh, we have 10 minutes uh, to question. You can ask some questions, please. Okay. So I have a question for Mr. Zhu Jidong. Now we have lots of news about the uh, super view, about how sharp it is and how fast uh, about the new revisit time. It's uh, really impressive. And so, uh, um, would you like to share with some news or some information about how is the uh, satellite going on now in Africa? We use Chinese for that. That, uh, Earth Imaging, now, we have done a release of the satellite on the 17th of July. We have released it. It is fully functional. And the official satellite is already announced. So, we have already given the satellite the satellite service. The satellite卫星采集安排然后包括计划执行运维全部都已经准备好目前虽然还在不断的改进当中但是我们已经开始了正式的方法服务我觉得这个在今年开始包括后续呃二级一号的民间的事情发射上之后我觉得那个高级卫星的数
卫星价格，包括呃它它的付出所带来的换取的是这个卫星航空服务和这个后续我们对这个项目执行，包括卫星采集的一个、呃、很多的这个投入在里。那么我觉得对于呃这是分两个方面来说，第一个就是。我们必须遵从这个商业化行动来做我们的业务。第二个，对于这个政府大的项目，实际上我们是和政府一直在呃合作。呃，我觉得呃在政府大的项目中间，我们是一直是站的站的高度也比较高。就是我们首先是呃服从于大的站的方向，然后支持项政府项目，然后开在政府的这个呃大的站的方向之下来开展我们的商业化任务。呃，但是我觉得作为第一个商业化卫星来说，我们坚持以商业化行为来做这些这个卫星服务业务。Okay, okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have uh five uh minutes so uh we please uh this each VIP give one sentence to close the GNF speech. Okay, please, from the Mr. Bai, one sentence. 确实，今天很高兴啊，能参加这个交流会。呃，确实也想说一句话，因为咱们全地球人只有一个太空，是吧？我们做的东西都在这一个太空里在运行，所以作为我们总师，最想或者说最想获得的就是我们做的东西能够。全球人能够共用，能够为全人类服务。当然，我们也想得到大家的支持，把我们自己的能力进步的提高。好，谢谢大家。啊、uh, ，Thank you very much. I think I was all speaking thanks to thanks to organizers、uh, of this uh, this forum. I'm going to have a meeting with the Colonel in the IAF. Ah, in one sentence, I think I would like to say. That uh, for us in Kenya and in Africa,、uh, the future looks very, very bright.、Uh, we can see that the whole world will very, very soon be able to reap the benefit of what space has to offer. Mr. <音>其实，呃，准备了很多那个想说的，但是就是一句话了。那我说一下我们那个企业愿景。刚才呃忘了说，就是我们企业愿景是那个富尔盖斯蒂，富尔盖斯蒂有其他那个队友，我们其实是